I'm Courtney. We're a family of five trying to grow as much of our own food as we can, and we raise chickens. Our kids wanted to name our little backyard farm, so we did. It's called Heart Pine Farms. In this video, we'll talk about tomato plant disease, which is so common that if you're growing tomatoes, you'll probably deal with it at some point. We'll show you how we deal with tomato plant disease. Notice we're saying how we deal with tomato plant disease and not how to deal with tomato plant disease because like everything in gardening, this isn't a one size fits all situation. We're not tomato scientists, we're just growing tomatoes in our backyard garden and sharing our experiences with it. There are two parts to this video showing two different tomato plant diseases and different ways of dealing with them specific to the type of disease. It's July 23rd and I'm out here checking on the tomato plants and it's quite a hot day. Actually, the temps aren't too bad. It's around 83, but the humidity is absolutely ridiculous right now. And I would bet that we're gonna have some pop-up thunderstorms this afternoon just like all the rest of the days for the past few weeks. But I was out here checking to see if we have any ripe tomatoes yet. And we do have some cherry bomb ones that are coming on, which is really exciting, but still waiting on the Romas and the Skyways and the San Marzanos, which is to be expected because we planted so late. But um, when I was walking by, I noticed an unfortunate thing. And that is this whole entire bed right here behind me. This entire bed of Romas is just uh, pretty much wilting and obviously it's happening really fast and I checked the soil. Um, I've been really careful about trying to provide consistent moisture to the tomato plant so I know it's not dry. I stuck my hand down in. I usually stick my hand down into the soil up to my knuckle and I feel the soil if it feels damp like a wrung out sponge and then if some dirt sticks to my fingers up to the knuckles then I know we're good and that's what I did back here so I know we're good. Um, there aren't any other physiological stressors going on with the plants that I can tell that would cause wilt like this so I am 100% sure now that it is some kind of disease. I'm guessing that it's either bacterial wilt or it is southern blight, just by the way that the tomato plants look. Verticillium wilt happens more often when it's cool and damp, um, probably more in northern climates. And the fusarium wilt happens where like one side of the tomato plant really starts to turn yellow and then the rest of the plant spreads and then wilts. But Everything is green right now when you look at it. So that's why I'm leaning towards bacterial wilt or southern blight. So um, I don't ever try to spray anything on the tomato plants to try to avoid the disease or stop the disease. I don't, uh, like if I see a branch that looks diseased, that's part of my pruning process. I prune it off and then see how the rest of the plant goes. And most of the time it's okay. The other thing I do is I plant disease resistant varieties. I had so many issues with diseases here when I tried growing heirloom tomatoes. Every single summer I'd lose so many to mostly blight. So I have switched over to hybrid and that's what I've been growing for the past five to six years now. Probably, yeah, five or six, maybe even seven years. And Skyway tomatoes do well down here. Um, and I also grow a hybrid Roma tomato and I grow cherry bomb and I'm growing cherry bomb this year. I've grown other types of cherry tomatoes that have done well that are disease resistant, but cherry bomb is the first time I'm growing those this year and they're doing really well, but San Marzano's also do pretty well where we are here. But so planting a variety that's disease resistant definitely helps, but sometimes no matter what you do, you provide consistent moisture, you prune, um, to provide airflow, you make sure everything is off the ground. You know, you plant your disease resistant varieties and you can't control the weather. And the weather I think is the number one thing in our growing zone that contributes to disease. So sometimes you just can't help it and you have to deal with it. That really, really stinks if you're growing like one or two tomato plants and one of them gets a disease and you lose one because that's a big hit. Or if you lose all of your tomato plants, if you're just growing a few, that's happened to me before and it's devastating. And then you pretty much say goodbye to your tomatoes for the whole season and it's sad. But um, we're growing our tomato plants for production because we make so much tomato sauce and we need them for salsa. We have a big family and we eat a lot of them fresh. So that's why we grow 32 tomato plants and I grow more than we need every year, really expecting that I'm going to lose some. And last year I lost a couple of plants 
to disease. And this year it looks like we'll be losing a whole entire bed of romas to disease. All four of these plants I'm going to have to take out because you can just see it spreading. Yeah, growing in volume does help and growing in raised beds is nice because you know, all of the rest of the tomato plants look fine and this diseased bed right here probably is not going to affect the rest of the tomato plants. The other thing that helps is the ability to um, rotate crops. We don't want to plant tomatoes following these tomatoes. Definitely not next year. Ideally not the following year. Ideally it would be four years, but even with us with 28 raised beds, because we grow a lot of tomato plants, it's pretty challenging to um, rotate crops, you know, every four years. So I usually go for around two years and that has worked out well. Planting cover crops also helps break the disease cycle. So we like to plant cover crops every fall for that reason too, just to help with the whole crop rotation, um, breaking up pest cycles, breaking up disease cycles, and just overall improving the soil health. Okay, so my best strategy in our garden has just been completely removing diseased tomato plants when they're like this and just getting them out of here. I definitely don't compost the diseased tomato plants that we're removing because it can spread through the compost back into the soil again. So definitely don't want to do that. So what we do in the back of our property is we have a burn pile. And actually, I don't compost any of our tomato plants, whether they're diseased or not, just because they're so susceptible to disease. So putting them in the burn pile in the back is just what we do to completely get rid of them. I also make sure that I don't handle any other tomato plants or any other plants in the garden after I handle these diseased tomato plants. I'm wearing my sleeves out here today, which are machine washable, and even my clothes. I'm going to make sure my hands are washed really well. My shears um, that I'm going to use to cut the plant at the base, I'm going to clean my shears. I, I usually use rubbing alcohol, but you can also soak your shears in a solution of water and bleach for 30 minutes, and that kills the pathogens. And I will also treat these with bleach and water too, just to make sure that the disease is completely gone. So here's how I'm gonna go about removing these tomato cages. I mentioned that I'm wearing my sleeves. These are my farmer's defense sleeves and I absolutely love these sleeves. It's really, really hot outside today and these actually keep me pretty cool on my arms and I don't have to wear sunscreen here. I have sunscreen everywhere else, but I don't have to put it on my arms now. And they also help prevent scratches. I've got tons of scars on my arms from these sharp tomato cages and so Anyways, I love these sleeves, and if you want to check them out, I'll put a link in the description. I'm going to start to carefully remove these cages here. So I'm going to take these straight to the back, way away from the rest of the garden plants to put these cages until I have time to clean them. The next thing I'm going to do is take my pruners and I'm just going to cut the plant at the base right here and very carefully remove it. I'm just gonna take this plant and carry it right back to the burn pile. I'm not gonna deal with putting it in a wheelbarrow or a bucket because then I have to worry about disinfecting that. So I'm gonna carefully carry this out of the way. All right, it's just going right back here on the burn pile. Okay, then all I need to do is come in here and finish it up by tearing the rest of the plant out. Like that. And then all of this is gonna go right into the burn pile. Like this plant is only partially affected and same with this one, but I'm just gonna remove them all. You can see that it has definitely been affected. I'm going to go for this one right here next. I'm actually even going to treat the bottom of my shoes with the bleach solution that I'm going to clean these tomato cages with just so that I don't spread it because I'm going to be coming out here later today and doing more garden work. But I'm just going to do a load of laundry to do my clothes and my sleeves and everything and then I'll come back out a little bit later to do the rest of my work as long as the storm doesn't prevent that from happening. <laughs> This is definitely an emergency that I had to take care of out here. It's always sad. There are tons of tomatoes on here too that were probably really close to being ripe soon, but oh well, it's just what happens. 
so I'm going to remove the second plant the same way. I'll just cut it off at the base and carry it back to the burn pile. Actually, what I might do is, since it's still summertime, I might plant a quick summer cover crop like buckwheat in here and then follow that up with our fall cover crop. But we're moving, so I'm not sure if I'm going to get that far. But let's remove this plant right here. It's always a sad thing to throw these in the burn pile. It's always a sad thing for me to do this at the end of the summer anyways because I just get sad when the tomatoes are done. But it's even sadder when you don't get any tomatoes to eat from the plant. If we were to end up with zero tomatoes, and I've ended up with very few tomatoes in my time of growing tomatoes, there is always the option of your local farmer's market to support local farmers. And actually there's a university near us and they have a garden in the back and the students grow the garden and they have a CSA program and everything going on. But we have purchased tomatoes from them before for our canning needs when we've ended up with very few tomatoes. So. There are definitely options out there if you end up without any tomatoes. <laughs> it's not the end of the world, even though it is disappointing. This unfortunate job is almost done, and then I'm gonna go inside and cool off because it is hotter than blazes out here. But I just wanted to mention one thing, did the late planting of the tomato plants have anything to do with the disease that's happening? I don't think it did because I've planted tomato plants really early before I've had disease problems. I think no matter when you plant your tomato plants, there's always that risk of disease just because they are so susceptible to disease. But the springs can be so up and down here in our growing zone, which it was this year. We had a really cool long spring, which is pretty unusual for us. So I'm kind of glad that I didn't plant my tomato plants earlier because I may have had more risk for blight because of the uh, cool, wet, cloudy weather that we had a lot. But yeah, the up and down weather also, I mean, there are just no guarantees with weather no matter when you plant your tomato plants. We'll see how the rest of the tomato plants fare for the rest of the season, given that they were planted late. Hopefully we'll get a lot of ripe ones soon. It's been exactly one week since we removed the bed of four Roma tomato plants and we're out here noticing the first signs of disease on one of our Skyway plants that I wanted to show you. First, I wanted to show you we just harvested the first three tomatoes from these plants of the season and this one's about halfway ripe and I do like to harvest them at this time because it helps prevent cutworm damage and bird damage and cracking and they just ripen perfectly safe inside on the windowsill this way. I wanted to show you the first signs of disease on this plant, which I believe is early blight. Um, early blight prefers hot, humid conditions, where late blight is cooler. I think it's up to around 80 degrees. So I believe that this is early blight based on the weather conditions that we've had. It's been really hot and muggy with daily thunderstorms, each one dropping anywhere from a quarter of an inch of rain all the way up to an inch of rain. So we've had plenty of rain to support these early blight conditions. Yeah, right now it's starting to rain again, all of a sudden randomly. Nothing shows up on radar and then it just starts raining because it's just that hot and muggy outside. So <laughs> you can see how these conditions definitely support the diseases on the tomato plants. <laughs> so if you look closely, you can see that there are some brown spots surrounded by yellow spots. And usually when early blight starts to happen, it starts to happen on the more mature, lower branches on the plant and then it kind of spreads throughout the plant. But you can see that this is not quite as much of an emergency as it was with the wilt that was happening on the Roma tomato plant. So I'm definitely not gonna remove the whole plant here. And hopefully this plant will keep going and all of the tomatoes will be ripe and we won't have a huge loss, but we will see how that goes. I'm just gonna remove the diseased branches on a branch by branch basis and of course I can see some lower branches that are starting to get a little close to the ground so I'm going to remove those as well. All of the rest of these Skyway plants look fine so far. I have dealt with blight before in the past and I've just removed the branches and had better luck than using sprays. Sprays have not really worked in the past for me 
and it's not really in my budget because they can be expensive and you just have to keep applying them over and over again. I've had the best luck with just removing branches and then usually the plants end up being okay and we still do get some ripe tomatoes. If you've had any experience with tomato plant diseases in your garden, please leave a comment and let us all know what your experiences are and what you've done. We're all just learning here every day in the garden and every year in the garden, no matter how many years we've been gardening, especially when it comes to challenging things like this, like tomato plant diseases. Like everything in gardening, from failures to successes, everything is a learning process. As frustrating as tomato disease really is, it's empowering us with more knowledge about our unique individual growing spaces and microclimates. With this knowledge, we'll be able to make our soil healthier, pick out varieties that do well in our gardens, figure out how to improve our irrigation methods, and so on. If you're not having a good tomato season, it's empowering you to have a better season next time.